Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Vinita Garg, HOD Computer Science. In this video lesson, we will talk about pointers. After going through this video lesson, you would be able to use pointers in arrays, define pointer variables in a structure and access data members through pointer, define pointer objects in a class and access members through pointer. Till now, we were accessing the value of a variable by its name. Whenever we declare a variable, a size of memory according to the data type of the variable is allocated and this memory is referred to by the name of the variable. So let us take an example where we have declared a variable a of type integer then two bytes of memory is allocated and this memory has certain address and this will memory will be referred to by the name a. Every variable in every function in a program is stored at a particular address. A pointer is used to refer to a variable indirectly that is by its address and not by its name. So what is a pointer? A pointer is a variable that stores the location rather than the value of a data item which can be variable or an array element. So let us take an example again. We are declaring a variable a of type integer and storing value 10 in it. So a 2 byte of memory will be allocated at certain memory address to variable a and 10 will be stored here. Now pointer is a variable which contains the address of the memory which is allocated to a. So it helps to access a memory location directly using its address. Why pointers? Why do we need to use pointers? Programming with pointers saves the processing time as pointers are accessing the memory location directly. It is more powerful and it is used extensively. Pointers support dynamic memory allocation and help in the creation of complex data structures like linked lists and trees. Pointers also improve the efficiency of certain routines like handling arrays, etc. Declaration of pointers. The syntax for declaring a pointer is data type, star, variable name followed by semicolon, where data type is any valid C++ data type, star means pointer to and variable name is any valid C++ identifier. So let us take few examples, int star ptr, here ptr is a pointer to an integer, that is ptr can hold address of an integer variable. Float star y, here y is a pointer to float, that is y can hold address of a float variable. Char star z, here z is a pointer to a character, that is z can hold address of a character variable. Address of operator, this operator is indicated by the symbol ampersand. It is a unary operator that returns the memory address of its operand. Here the operand is a normal variable. So let us take an example to understand it more clearly. So int x equal to 10 where x is a variable and 10 is the uh, value allocated to it. So a 2 byte of memory space will be allocated at, such, at particular address and 10 value will be stored there and this memory is referred to by name x. Now when I say C out x, 10 will be displayed, you can see the output. But when I say C out ampersand x, ampersand means address of. So 
it will display the address of x, the address where memory is allocated to x. You can see in the output, the memory address of x is displayed here. Initialization of pointers. A pointer variable can be initialized by storing the address of variable to which it is going to point to. So let us take an example int x equal to 10. So again 2 bytes of memory will be allocated to x and value 10 will be stored there. So the next statement is int star ptr is equal to ampersand x. So ptr is a pointer of type integer. Ampersand means address of. So it means we are storing address of x in ptr. So you can see ptr is a pointer variable and instead of holding a value it is holding an address of a variable. Dereference operator. Dereference operator is indicated by the symbol a streak or star. It again is a unary operator that returns the value stored at the address pointed to by the pointer. Here operand is a pointer variable. So let us take an example to understand it more clearly. Int x equal to 10. Again, 2 bytes will be allocated to variable x at certain memory location and 10 will be stored there. So when we say int star ptr is equal to ampersand x, so here we are declaring ptr as a pointer variable which can hold an address of integer type variable and where here we are storing an address of integer x. So you can see here a memory is allocated to ptr and ptr is holding an address of x. So it is also pointing to x. So when we say C out ptr, so the address stored in ptr will be displayed. You can see in the output the address which is stored in ptr that is the address of x will be displayed. And the next statement is C out star ptr. So when we say star ptr, it displays the content which is present at that address. So the value or content present at the address stored in ptr is 10. So in this case 10 will be displayed. Here star ptr is used for the value stored in the memory cell pointed to by the pointer ptr and it is called dereferencing the pointer. Pointer to array. Now consider the declaration int a5. Here a is an array of size 5. You can see the memory allocation of a and whenever we declare an array, memory is allocated to it and it starts from certain memory address. The name of the array is always a pointer and it holds the starting address of the array that is the address of 0 location or address of name of the array and its very first element that is a0 in this case. Another point to remember in this case is that a pointer to an array is always a constant pointer that is its value cannot be changed in the program. Pointers can be used to print all the values of an array. So let us see how we can do this. So first we are writing a program in which we are declaring an array A of size 5 and we are assigning value 20, 35, 25, 22 and 27 to its elements. Now we are using a for loop to display the content of the array for int i is equal to 0, i less than 5, i plus plus, c out ai. Now let us see how we can write a similar program using pointers. So again we are declaring an array a int a5 equal to 20 comma 35 comma 25 comma 22 comma 27. Now we are using the loop for int i is equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus c out star a plus i. What does it mean? Now in the beginning i is 0 so it will become star a. A is the name of the array which holds the address of the first element of the array. 
that is the address of the element 20. So, when we say star a it indicates the value which is present at that address and the value present at this address is 20. So, 20 will be displayed. Now, when we go in the loop again i will be incremented and i will become 1. The condition is true as 1 is less than 5. Now, this statement will become star a plus 1. So, now it will be pointing to the next memory location that is element number 1 and star will dereference it and it will display the value which is present at that address. Similarly, when i will become 2, it will become a plus 2 that is the third element of the array and star a plus 2 gives the value 25. So, this process will go on till the loop finishes and terminates. Pointers and strings. We can also handle strings using pointers. Let us make it more clear using an example. So, in this example, we are uh, declaring a variable str of type string and we are initializing it by the value computer. So, you can see in the memory diagram, a memory will be allocated to the string computer and the beginning address of it that is the address of C will be stored in the where array name str. The next statement is cas star cp is equal to str. Here we are declaring a pointer cp of type character and we are storing the address which is stored in str now in cp. Now, the str contains the address of c of the string computer. So, cp will also contain the address of c. So, that is it is it will also start pointing to the string computer. Now, when we say c out str, it will display the entire string computer as you can see in the output window. Now, the next statement is c out cp. Now, again as cp is pointing to a c of the string computer. So, again the c out statement will display the entire string computer. Now, the next statement is cp plus plus as we do the increment operation on cp. So, cp will start pointing to the next memory element that is o. So, when we say c out cp the output will be computer. It will start displaying from the element o. The next statement is str plus plus. This is an invalid statement because str is the name of the character array or string and the name of the array are constant pointers. They cannot be incremented or decremented. Pointers and structures. The general syntax for creating pointers to structures is struct name star struct pointer semicolon. So, let us make it more clear using an example. First, we are creating a structure student. So, struct student with members as roll number and char name 30. Now, in void main, we are creating a variable of this structure s1 of uh, structure student when we declare the variable of structure student, uh, memory will be allocated to its data members. So, the next statement is c in s1 dot roll number. So, whatever roll number we enter that will be stored in the data member of in the data member roll number of variable s1. The next statement is gets s1 dot name. So, whatever name we enter that will be stored here in the data member name. You can see here 10 is stored in roll number and Ankita is stored in name. Now, the next statement is student star stu. So, stu is a pointer to a structure of type student. When we say stu equal to ampersand s1, it means we are storing the address of s1 in stu. So, stu will also start pointing to s1. Now, how can we access the members of the structure through they can be accessed using a special symbol which contains a combination of hyphen and greater than sign. You can see on the screen C out stu hyphen and greater than symbol roll number and then stu hyphen 
greater than sign and name. When we say this, you can see in the output window, roll number and name will be displayed. Pointers and objects. The general syntax for creating pointers to objects is class name star object pointer semicolon. So, let us understand it with the help of an example. We are taking a class student with data members, role number and name and public member functions in data to input the data uh, values of these data members and the function out data to display the values of these data members. Now, let us come to main. In main, the first statement is student S1. S1 is an object of type student. So, memory will be allocated to its data members, role number and name. Then we are declaring a pointer to this uh, class that is star 2. The next statement is S1 dot in data. So, in data function will be invoked for the object S1 and whatever values we enter through the keyboard that will be stored in roll number and name. You can see here roll number has value 10 and name has value Raman. Now, the next statement is 2 equal to ampersand S1 that is in stu which is a pointer variable of type student we are storing the address of S1. So, stu will also start pointing to S1. Now, the next statement is S1 hyphen greater than sign that is the arrow symbol out data that is we are accessing the member function through a pointer to the object stu. So, again uh, it will call this function out data and the values of roll number and name will be displayed. So, this is how we can access the members of the class with the help of object pointer. This pointer all objects in C++ have access to their very own address through a pointer called this pointer. This pointer points to the object for which a function is being called. So, let us see an example class 2 we are declaring which has the data members as roll number and name and member functions as get data and put data. So, in the functions you can see here we are writing C in this arrow roll number and this arrow name. Again in put data we are writing C out this arrow roll number and this arrow name. Let us see in main the first statement is 2 a comma b. We are creating two objects a and b of class 2. So, memory will be allocated to the data members of the objects a and b as you can see in the memory diagram. So, when we say a dot get data, so get data function will be invoked for the object a and in the get data function this pointer refers to the object a. It, it refers to the object for which this function is being called as we are calling get data at present for the object a. So, here it will this pointer will refers to a. Now, the next statement is a dot put data. So, again in put data function this will refer to object a. The next statement is b dot get data. Now, in get data function this will refers to the object b because now the get data function has been invoked for the object b. The next statement is b dot put data. So, now the put data function this will refer to the object b because put data function has been invoked for the object b. So, this is how this pointer works. So, in this video you have learned the use of pointer in variable, array, structure variable and class object and the use of this pointer. I hope all the concepts are clear to you. Thank you.